Jan in Karlsruhe, Germany writes, Paul, thanks for your daily videos and all things and life. <laughs> My pleasure. Uh, I too subscribe to the method of repeatedly approaching one subject from various angles to gain a deeper level of understanding over time. Thank you for that. Uh, you know, I, I really appreciate that because a lot of you are, hey, we've heard about subwoofers before. We have, But every time I talk about subwoofers, there's a little kernel, sometimes a big kernel, of something new that some people will say, ah, I never thought of that. I never got that. And that's why a lot of times I repeat these things because every single time, and we're just talking, I'm going to be able to share with you some insights that probably hadn't occurred to me the last time we talked. So I, some people get that, and I appreciate that. All right. And we're a community. Come on. If, if you've been watching these for a while, we're brothers in stereo. There you go. <laughs> oh. Can I get in trouble right now? I'll probably, I'll probably be shot for this, but th that's okay. Because um, I, th <laughs> you all know my political views. So, and I ain't gonna talk politics, but I came around here and said, I got a great idea. How about if I make a big pin that says, make audio great again. And half the people here thought it was hilarious. <laughs> The other half thought, whoa, better not say that. And so I won't say it. Okay. Um, I have recently added a subwoofer to my modest but well-tuned hi-fi system. Lots of time and a little money invested into the setup, room acoustics, and power solutions. And I was wondering about the following. Does the distance from the subwoofer to the listening position have any effect on its integration with the main speakers? Would one not want the bass waves to be perfectly overlapping by having all woofers placed equidistant from the listening position? Thank you. Um, no. Well, mostly no. Okay. So in theory, we want all waves hitting us at the same time. But that is impossible. It's very difficult in a passive situation. Now, now through uh, time alignment in electronics, we can do that, but I'm not a big fan of that. And people have had slope baffles and things. But wavelengths travel at different speed or f at, at different frequencies reach us at different points, right? So longer waveforms aren't going to be here at the same time that a shorter waveform is going to come. So you kind of have to get that out of your sphere of thinking because that's not going to happen but it's okay it's okay and then we have reflections and all this stuff the long wavelengths of subwoofers are not as important to reach us at the same time as the main woofer to the point where in some of the subwoofers I've designed over the years we've put 360 degree phase controls on them which means they are a full cycle off and you'd never hear the difference. So that it's because of the long wavelengths, it's because those wavelengths are building up in the room and it, you're not in an anechoic chamber. It's, it's not a perfect situation. So it really, in a practical standpoint, does not matter. What matters is that you put that subwoofer in a place that augments the main woofers. So that's why we talk about the subwoofer crawl of going around, putting the subwoofer here in the seat, going around the room and finding the best place for it, and then swapping positions. That kind of thing is important and irrelevant to the position of the main speakers. So don't stress on time alignment when it comes to those low frequencies, okay? Just put the subwoofer where it's going to fill in the gaps that the main speaker has because of the room. Okay? All right. Thanks. Bye.